Hey Home Bakers, it's Jack here, Bake with Jack. Door.co.uk bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week we're answering the question, can you overwork your bread dough by hand? Roll it! Hello there and welcome back to the Bake with Jack YouTube channel where I share with you a little bit of my bread making expertise every single Thursday. If that's the sort of thing that you're into and you haven't pressed subscribe yet, have a think about it before you go. I've heard stories about overworked dough, over needed dough, and it's not something I've experienced myself because I just never would. I haven't been that far and it's because I need my dough when I need it for eight minutes. It's the same that I do at home and it's the same that we do in class. That seems to be enough for our dough, but the question remains, can you overwork it by hand? I've always answered that question by saying theoretically, yes, of course, but it's not something we need to worry about. So in this video, let's put it to the test. Let's discover together whether you can overwork the dough by hand. Cut to the table. Okay, here we are at the table. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm using a straight up white dough. I'll tell you what we do. Let's move this to the side and put the ingredients here. This is what we're using, 1,000 grams of strong white bread flour, 650 grams of water, 24 grams of yeast, and 16 grams of salt. I've mixed it up, all ready to go. And here, I've got a little alarm clock. Let's pop it on the top like that. There we go. Bada bing, press start. Off we go. And let's begin our kneading session. Okay. So the theory goes that when we are kneading dough, we are building up the elasticity, yeah? Building up the gluten, building up the strength inside of the dough, okay? Developing that gluten really nicely. It's like elastic bands, yeah? Short, tight elastic bands at first that are, makes the dough delicate and fragile and easily breakable. And as we work it, we're developing that strength, making it stronger, more elasticy, and more stretchy. So it's able to hold all the gas produced by the yeast. But here's the theory of overworking stuff, and it is true. If you go too far, uh, your gluten will start to break down again. Everything will become sticky and horrible again. That's what happens. After you've developed it nicely, keep going too far, too far. Everything breaks down again. And that's exactly what we don't want, okay? And I feel like the way to do that by hand is to either do it for too long, to do it too aggressively, too forcefully, you know, and to tear the dough. If you're tearing the dough up all the time, that's not gonna help you that either. You're gonna be tearing up all that gluten and breaking it back down again. Okay, and that's the theory of overworking though. It's completely possible on a machine. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to do by hand. So normally, like I said earlier, it's gonna take about eight minutes to get to where I like it to be. So I'm gonna go there, eight minutes, we'll split it in two, and I'll continue on with the second piece, as long as it takes until we get overworked. I'm knackered already. Let's speed up a bit. Okay, here we are at the eight minute mark of nice, casual, relaxed uh, kneading. And now I'm gonna cut it in half and we'll keep half of this um, for our one we're gonna over knead, hopefully, and the one we're gonna keep normal. Okay, there we go, all weighed, so they're both exactly the same size. Uh, this one we're gonna let sit for a minute before I shape it up because it doesn't look like it's ready as we mentioned in that other video before. We're gonna leave it there for a bit before we shape it up and then look for the signs of why in the meantime, I'm gonna continue kneading this one. So this one's had a couple of minutes rest now. That's as far as I would normally take it. Let's give it a dust, fold it up and see what we're working with. Now we've got a nice smooth round dough like this, beautifully smooth. Bouncy. I would consider this done now. I would consider this good to go. That's as far as I would normally go. We'll pop that in the bowl there, and then we're going to continue on with this one for as long as it takes, baby. Ooh, 
Okay, let's take a break at the 20 minute mark. Up till now, I don't feel like there's much difference. Maybe it's getting a little bit tighter. Maybe it's a little bit tackier, I'm not sure, but we're 20 minutes in now. And just for the record, so you can see in real time what I'm doing, all I'm doing is kneading like this, quite casually, just like this, like I normally would do. Sometimes I'm swapping hands like this, but really I'm not being overly forceful or anything like that. Just seeing how far we can go before it goes. Okay, 30 minutes in, whose idea was this? My biceps are a little bit bigger and this is looking pretty much the same. Maybe it's a little bit stretchier, maybe it's a little bit slacker, or maybe I'm just looking for stuff to happen because nothing's really happening and we're 30 minutes in. Maybe it's a little bit more tacky, I don't really know. Let's put the timer on and continue. See the lengths I go to to bring you an informative video every week? Maybe we'll up the stakes and go a little bit faster for the next bit. Let's go. Again, I can't really see anything happening. What I'm looking for is stickiness. It's a breakdown of the gluten structure. And uh, seriously, where is it? 45 minutes to go, come on. I think we're gonna up the stakes a little bit, okay? I'm gonna start being rough with it, start being forceful with it. It breaks my heart a little bit to do that, but I'm gonna keep going. Up the stakes. Be a bit more heavy handed, all those things that I tell people not to do in class, you know? Heavy handed, push into the table, all this sort of thing. <laughs> I'm in. I'm done. 
Enough is enough. Oh, enough is enough. Woo! Oh, man. Come on. This is not supposed to happen, is it? If anything, it's stronger than what it was. Oh, man. No, see ya. This is embarrassing. I think the point of this video is the following. Overworking dough by hand is something we no longer need to be worried about doing because even after an hour and a half, I still wouldn't really consider the dough to be overworked. Sure, the final bread in principle will have different characteristics. It will probably have a tighter crumb structure. Whether or not that's a bad thing to you uh, is up to you, but it's all completely irrelevant anyway because you probably wouldn't need it for an hour and a half before you made your loaf and baked it, unless you're completely crackers. The dough itself still holds the same characteristics that will make bread. It's elastic -y, it's strong, it's stretchy, and therefore the yeast will have no problem puffing up the dough and the dough will have no problem holding all the gas made by the yeast. It's going to puff and that means that the bread you bake will be edible. You still won the game. But none of that matters unless you're gonna accidentally uh, knead your dough for 90 minutes by accident. <laughs> Rest assured, you can work your dough by hand and you're not gonna overwork it. You're gonna be absolutely fine. It's still gonna be able to make bread. It's just another thing we don't need to be concerned about. And we don't need to worry about while we're making amazing bread at home. Listen, thanks so much for stopping by for a weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. I'm gonna get some rest now and I look forward to seeing you next week for another one. See ya. Well, there it is. Uh, can you overwork a dough by hand? And the answer is, not in an hour and a half. Anyway, did that go as you thought it would go? It certainly didn't go how I thought it would go, but there you go. I hope this video was helpful to you in some way on your quest for making amazing bread at home. See you next week.